Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and this video is about question number nine from the International A Level Ed Excel Pure Mathematics P1 October 2021 exam. This question here is about transformations and also something about thirds and solving equations. In this question, you must show all your stages of working. Solutions relying on calculator technology are not acceptable. Um, I guess that. That applies to the simplifying the third section as well. So here it says, figure five shows a sketch of the curve with equation y equals f of x, where f of x is equal to the positive square root of x, and x is greater than zero. The point P93 lies on the curve, and is shown in figure five. Uh, on the next page, there's a copy of figure five called diagram one. On diagram one, sketch and, and clearly label the graphs of, f of y equals f of 2x, and y equals f of x plus 3. Show each graph, show on each graph the coordinates of the points to which p is transformed. Okay, so I mean I'm just gonna do that on this page. Really, you have to do that on the on the next page. I mean I can even do that here, there's no problem. Um, okay, so on this page we have to draw the transformation of the graphs according to um, the transformations y equals f of 2x and y equals f of x plus 3. Okay, so I'll use this, this space on this side to show the steps of what I'm doing. Okay, so now what we can see here is we've got the graph of y equals f of 2x and y equals f of x plus 3. So our original graph is y equals, let me get the pencil in out first. The original graph is y equals the square root of x. And we have to draw y equals f of 2x. Okay, and we have to also draw y equals f of x plus 3. And we have to draw the new coordinates of the point, um, p, which is 9, 3. I have to give the, the image of that point. So f of 2x, this is basically where the x coordinates, or the, the, the x has been replaced by 2x. So this will become y equals basically the square root of 2x where the x has been replaced by 2x, and this will become the graph y equals f of x, which is exactly the original uh, you know, equation, which was f of x was root x. Okay, you're going to take that, and you're going to basically add 3 to it. That's the new equation for, uh, that's what f of, f of x plus 3 is going to give us. Okay, so here we have replaced the x with 2x. So this is basically going to affect only the x coordinates. The y coordinates will remain unchanged. And what's going to happen is, as it's multiplying the x coordinates by 2, you're going to multiply the x coordinates. As you're multiplying the x inside the function by 2, you will multiply the x coordinates by the reciprocal of 2, which is a half. So the new, new point P for this first graph is going to be a half of four, 9, which is 4.5 and the y coordinate will remain unchanged. And for the second graph, I'll call it p double dash here, the transformed image of p, well, here you have added 3 to the whole function. So what happens here is the x coordinates remain unchanged. So the x, x coordinate is going to stay as 9, but the y coordinate, it's like this is a vertical translation of 3 units vertically. So what's going to happen is, is the, the, the y coordinate is going to be um, increased by 3. So this is going to be 3 plus 3, which is 6. So these are the new coordinates of the point P. Um, for the first graph, y equals the square root of 2x. And for the second graph, y equals root x plus 3. So we can now draw the graphs. I'll just do it on the next page, as they say. Okay, so it says... Okay, good. So we have to show those points. So let's go to this graph here. So we've got to draw um, y equals f of, f of 2x. Okay, so as we mentioned that one, the y coordinate, so the, the new coordinate of P for this one is going to be 4.5 and 3. Okay, this is for f of 2x. And the new coordinate of P for the second one is going to be, it's going to remain as 9, and this is going to become 6. And this is for f of x plus 3. Okay, so the new coordinate for the first graph is going to be, still going to be, this is still going to be, uh, the y coordinate is going to be 3, but the x coordinate is going to be 4.5. So it's going to be about halfway between here and here. Okay, this is going to be the point. This is going to be where x is 4.5. So this will be the point P, 4.5 and 3. All right, so it's going to start from the same place down here because it's a horizontal stretch. So when x is 0, 
Y is going to be, um, when, 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 X, when if X was zero in the first, in the original graph, then X will still be zero in the second graph. So it's going to start from the same place there, and then it's going to stretch kind of horizontally, but with a stretch factor of a half. So it's going to look something like this. This is Y equals F of 2X, which is basically Y equals the square root of 2X. Okay, so that's the new position of P according to this graph. And the other graph, well, everything is raised by, um, you know, three units upwards. So the second graph, um, it's the, the new position of P is going to be 9. The X will stay the same, but the Y will be doubled. It'll be up here, 6. So it's going to be somewhere over here. This is going to be the point P, which will be 9, 6. But what's going to happen is this point that was at the origin or just after the origin here where when x equals 0, y equals 0, this is going to go up here. So it's going to start from just above here. It's going to move up three spaces. So 0, 0 is going to become 0, 3. And it's going to go something like this. Same type of shape, but going through the point 9, 6 this time. Okay, so this will be the graph. y equals the square root of x plus 3, which is y equals f of x plus 3. So that's, that's a sketch of the, the graph. Um, for y equals root x plus 3, this is y equals root 2x. So these are the new points p here, and you can say p double dash there. Okay, so that's answer to part A. We've drawn the graphs of these two, and that's done. Okay, so now we've got to show that the x coordinate, so the graph of y equals f of 2x meets the graph of y equals f of x plus 3 at the point q, show that the x coordinate of q is a solution of um, this equation here, root x equals 3 times the square root of 2 plus 1. Okay, so as we mentioned, f of 2x, okay, this will be the graph y equals root 2x. And f of x plus 3 will be given by equation y equals the square root of x plus 3 outside the square root. Where do they intersect? Well, they intersect where, basically, um, you can solve these equations simultaneously. Okay, so where they're equal to each other, you could say. Um, so if we replace, for example, this y with root 2x, and this is root x plus 3, and I solve that equation, I've now substituted one equation into the other. This will be the equation which tells me the, the x value of where they intersect. And we've got to show that this is what we get for, you know, the x-coordinate will, will help us to find the x-coordinate. If we solve this equation, we'll get the, the value. So we have to basically um, rearrange this so it looks like that. Okay, so the first thing I can think of doing is splitting this up in terms of the rules of thirds. We know that the square root of AB underneath the third is like the separate square root of A times the square root, separate square root of B. So I can write this as root 2 times root x. Okay, now, I want only to have root x. So if I bring the root x's together on one side of the equation, so I have root 2 times root x minus root x equals 3. And then I take out root x as common. So I have root x times root 2 minus 1 equals 3. And then I divide both sides by root 2 minus 1. I'm left with root x. But what we see is they don't look like the same thing here. And that's because... We can't leave um, an expression like this where you have a square root in the denominator. We have to rationalize the denominator. So if we do rationalize the denominator, hopefully we'll get what we're supposed to get. So when you rationalize a number like this, a term like this, you have to basically multiply it by its conjugate, which is like the same two terms inside here, except you change the sign to the opposite sign. That will give you something where when you expand it, the middle term, which will be this third term, will be cancelled out. But if you multiply the denominator of, I, of a fraction by something, you must multiply the numerator by the same thing, otherwise you change the value. So this is going to give us root x equals, this will be 3 times um, brackets the square root of 2 plus 1 over, now when I expand this, I'll have root 2 times root 2, which is 2. I'll have, of course, the middle term will become root 2 minus root 2, which is going to disappear, which was the whole point of Multiplying by this, you have minus 1 times 1, which is minus 1, and that gives you just 1. So we can say root x is equal to 3 times the square root of 2 plus 1, which is exactly what they ask us to show. 3 times the square root of 2 
plus one. Okay, so this is as required for us to show. So I'll just put as required and we finish this part of the question. Okay, so we've shown that this is a solution. Okay, um, the x coordinate of q is a solution of this, of this equation. If I solve this equation, I've got the x coordinate of q. Okay, and that's part b. Now for part c, it says the graph of, as we mentioned, Okay, we just did that actually. We just did it on that same page. Let's go to part C. Now it says, hence find in simplest form the coordinates of Q. So we know that the square root of X equals 3 times, in brackets, root 2 plus 1 is the, uh, if I solve this, I find the X coordinate of Q. We need the X and Y coordinates of Q. So what I can do here is simply just square both sides. That gives me X equals, and this would be 9 times, and this would be root 2 plus 1 all squared. Now I want it in simplest form, so I need to expand the bracket. So I have 9, and this gives me, if I expand it, I'll have root 2 squared, which is 2, plus, and I'll have 2 times root 2 times 1, which is 2 root 2, and I'll have plus 1. So if I simplify that, I'll have x equals 9 times, and this is 3 plus 2 root 2. So that's the x coordinate of q. Now we need to find the y coordinate of q. Now we know that we can choose any of these two equations. Um, and the two equations were, if you remember, it was y equals um, the square root of 2x and y equals the square root of x plus 3. These were the two equations um, that we found for f of 2x and f of x plus 3. Okay, so we can substitute this x value into either of these two. Um, I think that, um, well, we don't put this x value, we can put root x in here, you see, because this is root x plus 3. So if I put this into here, I think that would probably be the easiest way. Okay, or I could put x into here. I could put root x. Well, then I have to multiply root 2. I think this is easiest. Just take y is equal to root x, okay, plus 3. So we can take root x, which is this. So you're going to have 3 times root 2 plus 1 plus 3. And if you simplify that, okay, so I've just replaced the, the, the root x with what root x is equal to. Okay, and then that will give me what y is. So y is going to be 3 times root 2 plus 3 plus another 3 so y is going to be 3 times root 2 plus 6 so we can say that the coordinates of the point um, q are going to be the x coordinate which is this one we can write that as 27 plus 18 root 2 or we can leave it like that and the y coordinate is going to be 3 root 2 plus 6 and we have now got the coordinates of the point q where the, the two graphs would eventually meet. Okay, so there's the answer to this question number nine. Okay, part C, and that's complete now. And other questions that you might want to watch about or from this paper, all right, the other questions from this paper, which is October 2021 P1, you can find in the playlist that should appear somewhere in this area. Other questions that you want to watch, which are linked to transformations, you can find in this playlist. I guess this is also about SIRDs and simplifying SIRDs, so you could see a playlist here which will be involving simplifying SIRDs, and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.